Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. In this video, we will talk about a new build that I've made that get, lets you get almost unlimited supers while combining different mods from the last few seasons. It's a really great build. I think you guys will like it a great deal. Again, if you find value out of this video, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Also, real quick, before we get into the video, I did want to let you guys know, I will be running a contest shortly uh, when I get to 500 subscribers. First off, the growth's been incredible. I made it to 350 subscribers as of the recording of this video, and the growth has just been crazy over the last few weeks. I really appreciate that. When I do launch the contest, uh, it will be to win actually a Jade Rabbit statue. This is something that normally retails for like 25 bucks on Bungie's site, and actually is already out of, uh, say, out of sale there, so you can't even get it. It's something that only comes in so often. So when we hit 500, we'll talk about that. This video is one of the reasons I grind all mods every season because bunching normally has a multi-season approach on how they tie mods together because you'll get a mod like why would i care about that mod but then three seasons later you're like oh crap i wish i'd gotten that mod because with this mod it really works well together so that's what we'll talk about in the video and that's an approach i think you definitely should use if you want to do builds over a period of time with the new systems that bungie's put in place this particular build will allow you to get supers super super quick and do it over and over again. Now, not something totally broken where you get them like every second, but something that's more reliable and that you'll be able to do over a period of time. It's very repeatable. While I am building this on the Void Hunter, similar to my past builds, you can do this on any class and subclass by using my build out as a guide. So next, let's get into the meat of what the build is. So let's talk about mods first. So the first mod is Blast Radius. It's a solar mod from Sea of the Dawn. You get charges of light with grenade launcher and rocket rapid kills. Then there's taken charge, which is an arc mod from season of the dawn. We get charges of light from picking up orbs of light. Now with this, this is how you generate charges of light. It's by getting orbs and getting kills with grenade launchers for my build. You could also do it for rocket launchers, obviously, but we're using grenade launchers in my build. Next comes energy converter. This is a void mod from season arrival. You consume charges of light stacks with grenade usage, and it can increase your super up to 50%. So let's talk about some details of this mod. It only works when you are under 50% on your super. So you want to do this early with charges or keep the charges until after their super. Once you're over 50, if you were to drop a grenade, it will no longer take your charges and they won't power up your super. So that's something to keep in mind. However, after 50, you can keep your charges and you'll be able to use those again to generate your next big bump of your super. The next thing I do for my specific build is I put grenade launcher reserves on void chest, and this is just a generic mod. Powerful friends is something I use also. This is an arc dawn mod, which gives you plus mobil 20 mobility with it when an arc mod is also put in. Now this one you don't necessarily need if you're on another subclass or another, uh, another type of character. In my case, it's useful for the type of build and how I'm building out my Void Hunter. Traction also gives you additional mobility. That's another generic leg mod. Again, this gives you tons of mobility. For my build, will allow you to get your dodge and smoke back very quickly. So on top of this, let's talk about some of the secret sauce that goes into this build. You can get Supercharge, which is a solar rival mod, which gives you two additional stacks of charges up to five. So on top of that, let's talk about some complementary mods. I use Absolution, which reduces all ability cooldowns when picking up Orbs of Light. Ashes to Ashes, which gives you bonus super energy from grenade kills. Lockdown, where your grenades latch longer. Again, this isn't a mod, but then this is, this is part of your abilities. And Combat Provision, which damaging with grenades grants melee energy. Making allies invisible grants grenade energy. And then finally, I start using uh, weapons with Demolitionist which kills increased grenade generational weapons. So you can see the power of putting all of these together. Grenades grant super energy, which helps you get your super quicker. Grenades last longer, so an ads group kill more ads. Damaging grenades grant melee energy, which allows you to have a smoke bomb, and use a smoke bomb grants grenade energy. Top that off of demolitionist weapons who generate grenade energy on enemy kill. So as you can see, you pull these together and you're doing two things. You're getting your grenades back quicker and you're also in the end getting your super back quicker. Then I make sure all my weapons are masterwork. So that allows me to continue to drop orbs so I can get charges of light. And then 
The other way I get that is by using two grenade launchers. In my case, I use Anarchy and Mountaintop. With Anarchy, and hopefully you have this, if you don't, you get it from the Scourge of the Past raid after a few runs. Uh, but with Anarchy, you can get a lot of rapid kills that generate charges very, very quickly. And then Mountaintop's just a, just a great overall weapon. So you can see how this all pairs together to maximize grenade generation and super generation. Get to 50% with these mods, and then get to 100% with grenades and demolitionist kills. Continue to get charges after you get your super to 50% so that once you pop your super, you can manually get to 50% again. This is a super, super fun build. I've had a ton of fun using this in all sorts of end game contact, whether it's the Prophecy Dungeon or Raids or even the Contact. I know that's not end, end game, but it's a lot of fun. The Contact Public Events. I mean, you could use it basically in any sort of PvE content. You could use this in PvP. The problem with PvP is that um, you're not going to get as many qu kills as quickly, so it's probably not as useful. Again, as a reminder, this is why I collect every mod that I can from every season. And I'll go to every source to get every mod if possible. The reason being is that you never know when a mod will become useful with a different mod, even if it's not useful today. So again, thank you for watching the video. I hope you got a lot of value out of it. I mean, I love making these videos. The growth of the channel, like I said, has been so explosive. I really appreciate all the support. And again, once I get to 500, we'll launch that contest that I talked about earlier in the video. Again, I love to give back and I love to hear your comments. So if you want to get in the community and talk about things, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. Get into the comments, talk about what you like to see next. What kind of builds would you like to see? What kind of builds could you make off of this? I'm sure you guys are just as creative, if not more creative than I am. So I really appreciate that. And I'll see you guardians in the tower.